Hi, this is the last of the videos on working out some rotation problems. So this question involves a collision. A bullet is going to come in, collides with this extended body, and go out at a different speed. And as a so I want you to just imagine this that there's a rod, a bullet comes in from left, strikes it, and then uh, exert some kind of force on the rod as it, it's interacting and then passes through. So the rod is going to rotate. So this is a rather complicated interaction. And uh, if we want to write out all the details, it'll take a lot of work, which is why we want to use conservation law strategies for this problem. So it's important to identify what quantities are conserved in this collision. So, um, so part A walks you through the three quantities that you would consider conserving. Kinetic energy, linear momentum, and angular momentum. So you just have to work through what are the conditions for conserving each of these and are those conditions met. So with the kinetic energy, the condition for conserving kinetic energy is that net zero work is done by any non-conservative force. And sometimes the identity of the non-conservative force can be hidden. So in this interaction of the bullet going through the rod, I think there's going to be friction. There's going to be kinetic friction between the bullet and the rod. That's what's slowing the bullet down. And I think that process will lose, um, lose some energy. So that's what I say based on, on my intuition. But to someone who doesn't have the same intuition that I do, I'm not sure quite how to justify that rigorously. I guess I'll say this much. Always be careful with the conservation of mechanical energy. Try to look for a reason to say, this is how I know this process must be elastic. It involves the springs or the problem says it's elastic. So if you don't see any of that, what I would do is I would start by assuming, well, kinetic energy might not be conserved and see if I can do the question based on that alone. Uh, if you can, great. You never have to use conservation of energy. If you can't, that's when you have to come back and try to justify yourself better. So here I'm going to uh, decline to comment on whether kinetic energy is conserved or not. And the effect of that will be, you know, I'm assuming kinetic energy is not conserved. So I won't be using conservation of energy. All right, let's move on. <laughs> it says, um, all right, is linear momentum conserved? So the condition for conserving linear momentum is that net impulse due to external forces have to be zero. So zero net external force would be one way to do it. When you look at this collision, um, it's easy to think too quickly. Oh, collision, no external force, momentum is conserved. So I want you to pay close attention to, to the fact that there's a pivot here. So the way this rod moves is different from the way it would have moved if this pivot weren't there. So what that means is that there's a force from the pivot. That's an external force. And that works a lot like a normal force. As in if uh, we make the duration of collision shorter, to try, trying to make the impulse smaller, the force will simply increase and um, uh, keep the impulse the same. So because of this pivot, the linear momentum is not conserved here. You have a homework question where uh, it's just a rod um, and there's no, it's not pivoted anywhere. In that case, the linear momentum will be conserved. But here, it's not. So the only thing remaining here is the angular momentum, so we better hope that that's conserved. And the condition for conserving angular momentum, it's uh, analogous to the condition for conserving linear momentum. You have to be able to say that the net external torque is equal to zero. Well, I have a non-zero external force, so what I could do is if I put my center of rotation here, if I put my rotation to be about this point, then I can say, well, 
the torque due to the pivot force is going to be zero because that's where it's rotating about. Um, so with that stipulation, I can say yes, angular momentum is conserved. So with that, with that stipulation, I can say that yes, angular momentum is conserved. So we are going to use that. Um, we are going to use conservation of angular momentum to work out what the angular speed of the stick is. And, um, oh yeah, part C is the complicated one. <laughs> um, all right, so let's do part B first. Um, and I think I'm actually going to leave part C to, to your uh, homework question and you know try it on your own and um, uh, read the answer because actually it does take a little bit too much work. So <laughs> I'm trying to keep this video short, so I'll do part B and then leave part C for your own exercise. Okay, so <clears throat> having gone through part A, we determined that we are going to say angular momentum is conserved. So we are going to use conservation of angular momentum. So I should address a particular point here. You have seen two different expressions for angular momentum. You have seen expression that involves rotation inertia and uh, angular velocity. You have seen that angular momentum is equal to rotation inertia times omega. This works well most of the times. There are some exceptions, but in this class, I will never give you a problem where you have that exception. So, you know, this statement is true as far as it goes. But in some contexts, it's not clear how to calculate angular momentum from this expression. Take this bullet, for example. It has an angular momentum about this pivot point. It does uh, have a sense of clockwise rotation, even though it's moving in a straight line. So uh, we need a way to express that. And this is actually the very basic definition of angular momentum. Angular momentum is equal to the displacement r cross product with the momentum. Or if you are dealing with the magnitude of angular momentum, it's the lever arm times the momentum. So the lever arm is defined the exact same way we were defining it for torque. So in fact, this definition should be reminiscent of what we are talking about when we are talking about torque. So for this problem, we are going to be using this formula for the angular momentum of the rod, and we are going to be using this formula for the angular momentum of the bullet. So with that, we can uh, write down an expression for conservation of angular momentum. We can say, well, the total of the angular momentum before collision is equal to the total of the angular momentum after the collision. Before the collision, there was no angular momentum of the rod, so you only had the angular momentum of the bullet to worry about. I think we are given this distance for the lever arm uh, to stick the midway. So if we say that the entire stick has length L, then this distance from pivot to where the bullet strikes, that's L over 4, and that's our lever arm. So we can say the mo angular momentum before, lever arm times momentum, L over 4 times momentum, and I is equal to the, the angular momentum after. So we can use the same expression for the angular momentum of the bullet. We can say the L over 4, still the same level arm, M times VF, plus now the additional angular momentum of the rod should be equal to the initial angular momentum. So the rod has rotation inertia of 112 capital N L squared. I just realized um, the problem gave us the capital L. Uh, I'll just use lowercase L. You can switch it for yourself. Um, that's the rotation inertia times the angular velocity is the angular momentum of the rod. So angular velocity of the rod. Oh, that's good. 
uh, we are being asked for the angular speed of the stick. So when we solve for, for this omega here, that'll be our answer. In fact, looking at all these quantities, it looks like I actually have everything. Um, VI is given, V final is given, all these are given. So actually it turns out to be a pretty simple problem. Once you figure out the correct quantity, conserved quantity to use, then we can say the angular velocity of the rod after the collision is given by uh, this difference. So L over four uh, and initial speed minus the final speed. And it's really because the problem gave us this final speed here that we didn't need uh, conservation of energy. That's really why. Um, anyways, <laughs> keep going. Um, so I'm solving for omega rod. So take all this quantity and multiply by the reciprocal of this coefficient. So it'll be 12 over capital N L squared. All right, I can simplify this a little bit. So let me do that. Uh, 12 over 4 is 3. So 3 times, uh, let me fix the, uh, the capital L versus lowercase l. So I see one factor of L canceling out one factor of L here. So uh, L will be in the numerator. So all right, I have 3 times lowercase m divided by uppercase m times l times um, initial speed minus final speed. So this is the angular speed or angular velocity of the rod after the collision. You can check the units to make sure that you get the expected unit of 1 over second or radians per second. So that's it. Um, as I said, the part to see is a little bit harder. So um, with the part C, what you can now say is that, okay, linear momentum is conserved, but that means uh, there isn't going to be a fixed pivot point. These will be sort of moving and rotating together, um, not together. Um, they will both be moving, and this rod will be both translating and rotating. So you have to break up the motion of the rod into the motion of the center of mass of the rod and the rotation about the center of mass. It's all very complicated. Um, I, I, there's a um, there's an exercise in the homework. Please take a look at it. But you know, I, I will tell you this much: it's too complicated for me to put it on the exam. <laughs> so, but uh, this one isn't. The where there's a pivot, it's uh, you know once you uh, figure out the conceptual issues, the calculation is doable. So, all right, um, that's all the material I have. If there are any questions, please let me know. Um, good luck studying, and I'll. Uh, see you in class. Bye.